Hello everyone and welcome to the Season 3 Finale Edition of Monday Night Raw. My god, I hope we go somewhere else in the new season. Because <laughs> we're in Los Angeles, California. We are just six days away from WrestleMania 3. And we're kicking things off with this man's return to the ring after being knocked out by the big show a couple weeks ago. A shocking double cross that led to the newly formed tag team of Jericho Show getting what they seek out as revenge for the ways in which this man has wronged them. R-Truth kind of caught up in the crossfires as the other half of the tag team champions. He will be alongside The Miz at WrestleMania 3 when Awesome Truth defend those tag team titles against the Jericho Show. We've only seen Jericho compete in uh, one match so far as a team, so we're really not too experienced with these guys as a tag team, but I'd have to be under the understanding that they have uh, a lot of chemistry amongst them. And of course, naturally, you know, when you've got the big show in your corner, as Jericho does, I feel like uh, Jericho can kind of just sit back and let Do Big Show do a lot of the dirty work, truth be told. <clears throat> now, whether or not that's Jericho's agenda, I don't know, but uh, I'm just saying, you know, and obviously speaking of the Big Show last week, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with The Rock in a great back-and-forth matchup. Well, we've been told that The Rock will be competing in our main event tonight as per JBL winning the uh, Beat the Clock Challenge last week. And we've been told that The Rock will compete in a gauntlet match in which the first man in that match will be The Big Show, but the other two superstars will be a mystery. So I'm very interested in finding out exactly what's going to be happening in that gauntlet match. Our main event tonight. Obviously, that's that's a very tough stipulation for The Rock to have to try and overcome ahead of WrestleMania. He's going to really need to try and preserve his energy as best as he can. We've also got a six-man over the top rope battle royal on this season finale episode of Raw. Uh, in which we'll be seeing the Intercontinental Champion Justin Gabriel face off against the five superstars set to challenge him for his Intercontinental Championship. However, of course, at WrestleMania, that will be a six-man ladder match, whereas here tonight on Raw, it will simply be an over-the-top rope battle royal. So whoever wins tonight will have a bit of momentum heading into WrestleMania, but ultimately, they'll be competing in an incredibly different match at WrestleMania, too. It's a very, very stacked uh, episode of Raw tonight. I'm really looking forward to saying goodbye to season three by the end of this one uh i've said it before and i'll say it again my intention today if i can pull it off is to record every weekly episode of season three today in one sitting uh and then the next time i sit down to record this it's just wrestlemania and then i can fight the urge to destroy this game as much as possible sounds like a plan nice bulldog there by chris jericho he gets a very quick advantage, so expect a lot of barricade break attempts. Obviously, 13 is going to want to go out in style, so uh, you know that's exactly what you can expect. Straight into the corner, Jericho uh, once again with this bulldog. Same spot, same move. Miz falling for that twice. I, I do wonder what kind of condition the Miz is in here tonight. Is he's definitely not going to be 100%. You know, that attack from the Big Show, I think, really took its toll on The Miz. But obviously, he's got to look towards WrestleMania. He's got to look towards keeping hold of those prestigious World Tag Team Championships that him and R-Truth have held for quite some time now. It's going to be uh, a big a big show, you could say. WrestleMania 3. Okay, I'm making sure Blackjack wasn't behind me before I move my chair. We... Um, also, we'll be finding out who will be in the final confirmed match for WrestleMania 3. The Divas Championship Contenders match takes place tonight. We have seen all of the Divas of Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Superstar, whatever. We've seen all the Divas of the WWE, is what I meant to say, uh, compete in these uh, matches. Uh, whether it be tag team matches, one-on-one -on -one matches, etc. And it has come down to what we have tonight, Layla and... AJ Lee, the winner of that match, will be the number one contender to the Divas Championship in possession by Lita. Cover attempt here by Jericho and a kick out by The Miz. 
Sending him off the rope and a big drop kick attempt there, but no. I tell you, Raw's really been kind of shaken up a little bit here as uh, the draft is next week. But Heath Slater seems to already have abandoned this show as he has formed an alliance with uh, Drew McIntyre, who he will supposedly team with at WrestleMania uh, for the WWE Tag Team Championship against Edge and Christian. Interestingly enough for uh, Edge, I believe, this will be his, I think this is his third WrestleMania in which he has competed in a tag team championship match, as I believe he was uh, teaming with Jericho at WrestleMania 1 face off against Show Miz for the WWE tag team titles. He was uh, at WrestleMania 2, he won the WWE tag team titles in a steel cage match against Triple H and Shawn Michaels, and uh, this year at WrestleMania, he'll be teaming up with Christian once again, again for his WWE Tag Team Championship, uh, as he faces off against uh, the combination of Heath Slater and Drew McIntyre. I tell you, this is uh, really a, a reputation that Edge has built as one of the greatest tag team superstars we've seen. Ooh, nice DDT there by The Miz. Of course, Jericho, you know, he was standing on his feet, so, you know, when Miz pressed circle, it didn't pin. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We've all been there, right? We all understand what that means. Submission attempt here by Chris Jericho, I mean, by the Miz on Chris Jericho. And I tell you, Jericho is not looking too hot in this matchup right now. This former Cruiserweight champion is really struggling to defeat the man that he held the first ever WWE Tag Team Championship reign with. Take you back to Christmas of 2009. It was these two that won the WWE Tag Team Championship for the first time ever. Miz has made a uh, Chris Christmas musical, as he calls it. No, that was terrible. Um, as uh, every year since 2009, the Miz has closed out the year by winning a tag team title, believe it or not. It's been an interesting career for some superstars, and I'll tell you, just as I was talking about Edge being a tag team specialist, I'd have to give recognition where it's deserved. The Miz has got to be one of the most decorated tag team superstars of all time, right up there with, I'd say, Edge and the Big Show. <clears throat> and now Jericho trying to get back into that realm as he goes for this submission hold here. Walls of Jericho applied right in front of the ropes, though. I feel like that was a big mistake on Jericho's part, and yeah, you see it right there. Miz was able to uh, reach the ropes pretty quickly. Jericho, though, going for a cover. You can't blame him off the walls of Jericho at the very least, as Miz is up to his feet. And there's a code breaker from Chris Jericho, the hopeful challenger for the Tag Team Championship cover attempt here in the Miz. Yeah, the big kick out. This would be a big victory for Chris Jericho, believe it or not. He's a very talented individual, Jericho, but you can't deny the fact that the Miz is a former WWE champion, multi time intercontinental champion. You know, a Money in the Bank winner. Many, many tag team championships. Miz has done it all. I respect Jericho a lot, but uh, his only singles championship to date is the Cruiserweight Championship, and both of his two reigns, I'd say, were very, very short-lived. And that's not meant as a, any kind of disrespect to Chris Jericho, but I feel like this team with the Big Show, this may be the thing that finally gets Jericho off the ground. Jericho went to do the same thing with The Miz, but he was just a little bit dazed there. These two really tearing the roof off this place to kick off this week's final uh, season finale episode of Raw. And don't forget, next week here on Raw, the draft begins. There will be uh, several draft matches next week on Raw uh, to kick off the new season. On top of that, we'll be having uh, several draft matches on SmackDown. And then uh, following Superstars, we'll be having the supplemental... Well, actually, I believe on Superstars, we'll be announcing the supplemental draft picks. So if you, uh, if you give Superstars a miss, I tell you, you're going to miss out on some big news. Controlling the arm. What does the Miz need to do at this point, King? I'm not sure there's anything. You punch out. Elbow oh, drop. Nope. Never mind. Big time miss. And he touches that one. Miz is in trouble. Miz He's over the ropes, outside. and now Jericho catches the Miz, and oh, there's a big suplex inside. there. Hey, Jericho has managed to find himself back in this, despite the fact that that DDT from the Miz really did its damage on him. You can see the blood of Jericho on the fist of the Miz. And of course, you know, what with a total of uh, about 30 matches left, and then we're done with this season. There had to be 
there had to be a barricade break attempt right at the beginning. Jericho once again. This didn't quite work out for him last time. You can't blame him for going back to the well. This is a known finishing move of Chris Jericho. The walls of Jericho have been applied. He's really struggling to keep pressure on those legs of the Miz, though. Miz is really finding his way over to the ropes. And the question is, does Jericho release the hold? Or does he continue to allow Miz to put up a fight? The whole time Miz is crawling with those ropes, even if he gets that break, ooh, and especially powering out like that, that's going to take a lot out of the Miz. Rakes the eyes of the Miz and then a code breaker. And I'm pretty sure the referee should have disqualified Jericho for raking the eyes of the Miz. But hey, that's a big, big victory for Chris Jericho. Even if he did kind of cheat his way into defeating the Miz with a very clear thumb to the eye. Referee didn't see it, I guess. Well, I believe, uh, up next, I can't actually remember what's up next. <laughs> um, up next we have a very unusual match, I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure I remember the great Khali being confirmed as in action, but I can't remember who he's against. I'm sorry, I, I don't know, is it Daniel Bryan? I think it's Daniel Bryan and Khali, a rematch taking place up next. Uh, that's correct. Uh, I was right with what I said a moment ago. A rematch between these two. They may have had superstars a few weeks back before Brian won the European Championship. Now again, if you missed it, uh, this past Saturday on Superstars, it was a one-on-one -on -one match between Jinder Mahal and the Great sorry, and uh, Daniel Bryan in the main event of Superstars. Uh, as Jinder Mahal tried to kind of prove his worth in the European Championship scramble that's coming your way this Sunday, uh, he went one-on-one -on -one with the champion Daniel Bryan. And in that match, uh, we saw an interference from Jinder Mahal's brother, the Great Khali, who threw a sledgehammer into the ring, which Mahal then proceeded to use, slamming Bryan onto the sledgehammer allowing him to hit the Coloss on a very weakened back of Daniel Bryan and then, of course, pick up the victory over the European Champion. So tonight, Daniel Bryan is looking for a little bit of retribution against uh, the Great Carly for his meddling in that matchup. The last time these two met in the ring, believe it or not, Daniel Bryan choked out the Great Carly and made him submit that guillotine choke of his, one of those fantastic moves in Daniel Bryan's very versatile arsenal. And we'll see if uh, he can make the Great Khali tap out twice, or if Daniel Bryan will be on the losing end of some very much needed momentum on his road to WrestleMania that culminates in just six days' time. And approaching the ring from Aberdeen, Washington, Well, he has been uh, slowly winning over the fans, I'd say. Daniel Bryan, the European champion, I won't deny, you know, I, I can't forgive and forget what went down with Dolph Ziggler not that long ago, but I will say that you look at Daniel Bryan nowadays, and he is a very admirable European champion, I feel like, as a singles competitor here on Raw. He's really brought his stocks back up, and I hope that... Uh, if the draft ends up bringing Ziggler and Bryan under the same brand, that those two can coexist. Maybe not reform a tag team, but simply exist on the same brand and not see one of them go to that kind of dark place that they had both evidently gone to during their rivalry. You could really see it taking its toll on the both of them. I'm sure Ziggler would love to get some revenge as he was moments away from a world championship awesome match with Stone Cold Steve Austin on ECW when Daniel Bryan took him out. And he hasn't had a world championship opportunity since, but Ziggler does have a chance to become United States champion this Sunday at WrestleMania when he meets Damian Sandow. And of course, that's an important moment for both of these two former partners, Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler. They are both competing 
as a champion or challenging for a championship at WrestleMania. And I think that goes to show how far these guys have come. Yes, Daniel Bryan is only a tertiary champion. I know that some people kind of look down on the European Championship, but it's kind of hard to look down on a championship that's currently being competed for by the likes of Eddie Guerrero, Daniel Bryan, Sheamus, uh, and Randy Orton, as well as, of course, Jinder Mahal, who recently seems to be building up a little bit of momentum for himself. Truth be told, that's a crazy one to be saying. I feel like Jinder Mahal has been very much a background character for a long time. But uh, he seems to be working that off. And I would be amazed if Daniel Bryan was willing to tap out even to someone like the great Carly with all the strength that he possesses. I think you'd be very surprised to see Daniel Bryan submit. A submission expert. I feel like the only man that could maybe match this guy hole for hole in a submission match is Bret Hart. Speaking of Bret Hart, he'll be in that six-man battle royal coming your way up next. I'm looking forward to finding out who is going to be getting the biggest amount of momentum heading into the WrestleMania six-man ladder match. That's what that one is all about. Momentum. Then we're going using that exact word, momentum, to use an arm drag maneuver on uh, the great Carly. Daniel Bryan is as determined as any WWE superstar today. This kid doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. He's got him up. And the thing is, the great Carly is just so damn dangerous. How does Daniel Bryan uh, come out of this one unscathed? How does he come out of this one, you know, ready for this Sunday? Obviously, I'm pretty sure we'll see all participants in the European Championship match compete in matches, uh, whether it be this Saturday on Superstars or this Friday on SmackDown. I'm sure we'll continue to see those contestants compete. I believe we've been told that we'll be seeing Eddie Guerrero versus Randy Orton this upcoming Friday on SmackDown after Guerrero knocked off Sheamus. To see who kind of has the last laugh on the SmackDown side of things. Daniel Bryan coming up with the... Oh! Looks like he just kind of roughly collided with the uh, shoulder of the Great Carly, which obviously that's not it's not a point of a body you're going to want to impact with your full with your full uh, body weight flying at. I'm warning you. Oh, Brian kicks uh, the Great Carly into the ropes, and once again, this man taking control here. Daniel Bryan striking away with those big kicks of his. Ooh, one big one for the road. Cover attempt here by Daniel Bryan. I wonder if we'll see an appearance from Jinder Mahal once again, or even Heath Slater who meddled in his last match. It was nice of uh, the Intercontinental Champion Justin Gabriel to kind of help neutralize that situation. It was just too little too late. And oh, Carly caught into the LaBelle lock. Will it be enough? to force a submission. Last time these two faced off, it was uh, the guillotine hold of Daniel Bryan that forced a submission out of the Great Carly. but you never know, the LaBelle lock could also get the job done on this seven plus footer. Daniel Bryan has been becoming notorious as a giant slayer. And that's with moves like that, you see the way in which Daniel Bryan is able to just keep blasting away at his opponent. Very admirable, admirable competitor. And, oh, wow. Carly showing off his brute strength as he just shoved Daniel Bryan to the mat. Bryan up to his feet, and Carly has been able to switch the momentum of this one that was starting to fall more in favor of the European champion. And this is going to be a tough situation for Daniel Bryan now. Corey Carly using his entire body weight to weigh down Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's going to be... You know, I don't feel like he's going to submit by any means. This guy is determined to crawl towards those ropes, and he manages to reach them. But that will have been a tough situation for Daniel Bryan to have been in. And it looks like, once again, Daniel Bryan, though, is not backing down. Huge kick across the head of the great Carly. Daniel Bryan hooking that giant leg. And he didn't need to force a submission out of the Great Carly this week. 
Interestingly enough, Jinder Mahal not as prevalent, prevalent as present for his brother's match against Daniel Bryan as Kali was for Jinder's match. This kind of continues to feed into my personal theory that uh, Jinder Mahal seems to be moving quietly and slowly away from his brother, the great Kali. He just doesn't seem that interested in Kali right now. It feels like he's very much associated with Heath Slater, but I feel like Heath Slater is maybe letting go of Jinder Mahal as uh, it seems like he kind of gave him a thank you present by handing off his European title shot to Jinder Mahal, and now he's trying to go for Drew McIntyre, which would be the third tag team partner that Heath Slater has ever had in his career, by the way. Well, anyway, the European champion Daniel Bryan is victorious as we move towards our next match of the night, a six-man over-the-top rope battle royal. Get ready to watch a lot of entrances. As we welcome you back here on Raw, Kevin Nash in the ring right now. The ring has been filling whilst uh, we were on a commercial break. I feel like it would probably be a quicker way to get through this video and not have, you know, like, probably about 10 minutes of entrances followed by, like, a four-minute match. So I thought I'd just cut the first three out. Cody Rhodes, Bret Hart, and Wade Barrett already in the ring. As here comes the increasingly cockier and cockier leader of the clique, Shawn Michaels, who has been uh, anything but supportive of his allies in the clique just lately. The guy seems to be very much focused on himself, and of course I feel like that's going to really come into play come uh, the WrestleMania six-man ladder match. If it comes down to him and Kevin Nash on that ladder, you know, I feel like Shawn Michaels will not hesitate to toss the big guy off of a uh, seven foot plus ladder. At this point in time, I feel like Shawn Michaels has made it abundantly clear it is all about him right now. I do wonder if the Intercontinental Championship is in this man's future. We'll make him a Triple Crown Champion, believe it or not. He's a former WWE Champion, former WWE Tag Team Champion. He's one mid title away. Minor title. Mid. It sounds like a cheating match. And of course, finally, here comes the Intercontinental Champion. This man walking into his third WrestleMania ladder match of all time. I talk about these uh, interesting little coincidences we've got at WrestleMania. Believe it or not, this is completely unintentional, but uh, yeah, this is uh, Justin Gabriel's third ever multi-man WrestleMania ladder match. He walked into the first ever WrestleMania as a challenger for the United States Championship and won the title. He walked into uh, his second WrestleMania last year as a challenger for the Cruiserweight title and was unsuccessful in a very, in literally the same kind of match, a six-man ladder match. And now he's walking into this year's WrestleMania, defending his Intercontinental Championship. And I'll be interested to see if he can walk out with his Intercontinental Championship still intact. This is a uh, very great ring of talent you've got in front of you right now. Definitely some of the best Raw has to offer. You could just believe any one of these six could just as easily be competing for a world championship at WrestleMania. I mean, Shawn Michaels literally has. He walked into the first of WrestleMania as WWE Champion. We won't talk necessarily about how he walked out of that WrestleMania, but he walked into it as WWE Champion. And there goes Brett, the Hitman Heart, thrown out by the Intercontinental Champion, Justin Gabriel, someone I feel could really use that momentum. He's definitely an underdog walking into WrestleMania. Legendary wrestlers like Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, and Brett Hart, as well as some real promising superstars in Wade Barrett and Cody Rhodes, I'd say, yeah, Justin Gabriel is definitely the one people are going to count out, especially, you know, with his history as a Cruiserweight superstar. I feel like he's definitely got that disadvantage going for him as Wade Barrett throws out Kevin Nash. Well, thankfully, we didn't see any kind of conflict between uh, Nash and Shawn Michaels. I really do want to see those two continue to get along. I feel like the click, we've only really seen a little bit of their potential, and I really don't want to see them fall apart, personally speaking. Barrett had that well scouted. Michaels had that well scouted. As I say, these uh, battle royals, they go by fast, but they do give you a taste of what is to come at WrestleMania. And that's what it's all about. 
Look at the goal. Come down to these four. And things have really slowed down for the moment. But those first two were eliminated, I find. Perhaps they were considered bigger threats, I don't know. Cody Rhodes suffered a loss firsthand to the hitman Bret Hart. I do wonder if that perhaps says anything about what people think of Bret Hart in this matchup. Maybe this WrestleMania matchup, not, not this matchup. You know what I mean. I don't think I needed to explain that. <laughs> I just did. Justin Gabriel could be eliminated from this battle royal. What would that do for the momentum of Cody Rhodes? You have to wonder. It would be huge, I feel, as Justin Gabriel almost thrown out by Cody Rhodes. Is this going to be an elimination for the Intercontinental Champion himself? He's really hanging in there, though. And Justin Gabriel is out. Well, of course, that will not win Cody Rhodes the Intercontinental Championship. In fact, he doesn't have to pin or submit. He can't pin or submit. Justin Gabriel to win the Cruiserweight Championship at WrestleMania. But that is going to really plague the mind of Justin Gabriel to know that in this preview, he was the third one out. To say this doesn't necessarily determine who is the biggest and the best headed into WrestleMania by any means. But uh, that momentum is certainly going to help one of these three superstars. Coming up after this, we've got the Divas Championship number one contenders match between AJ Lee and Layla. We have waited an entire month for this moment, and we are finally going to find out who is going to be challenging Lita on the grandest stage of them all. We have been told that if this match ends in any kind of a no contest type situation, both Divas will advance, as uh, WrestleMania is this Sunday, and there's not a lot else that can be done about that situation, but it would be preferred that just one of them came out, the winner and the number one contender for the Divas Championship. There is a lot of love for AJ Lee in the air tonight. There, there has been for months on end, and I do wonder if she'll finally get her one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Lita after months and months of chasing it. As, wow, Cody! Cody picking up some real momentum in this matchup, eliminating both the Intercontinental Champion Justin Gabriel and a former World Champion in Shawn Michaels. If Wade Barrett were to eliminate Cody at this point, I feel like that would be a, a real uh, bit of luck for Wade Barrett right now. Cody, very, very impressive in this lineup. I'm glad I matched this six-man battle royal. So I'm thinking about this Sunday already. Could Cody get Wade Barrett out as well? He's hanging on that bottom. Remember, Wade Barrett is only really in this via a little bit of a fluke. Mark Henry got himself willingly counted out in his match last week on Raw because of the interference from John Cena. Wade Barrett didn't actually win his match against Mark Henry. Mark Henry simply walked away from the match and Barrett accepted a count out victory. I'm not trying to uh, diminish Barrett's credibility by any means. He's an incredible talent, but... He definitely is in via a little bit more of a fluke than some of the superstars like Cody Rhodes who had to go through a tough matchup in order to qualify. Cody Rhodes actually defeated Jinder Mahal to qualify who ended up getting a European title shot at WrestleMania anyway, so I guess they both won in that situation. Big suplex brings down Cody Rhodes from Wade Barrett. I feel like these two have really managed to uh, set the pace in this matchup. I really thought uh, we were going to be witnessing the end of this one pretty soon after uh, Shawn Michaels was eliminated and Justin Gabriel were eliminated. But surprisingly, this battle royal is going longer than most of these over the top rope battle royals do. And I ain't actually complaining. It's, it's very refreshing to see. Nice clothesline there by Cody Rhodes. Cody. Coffee. <laughs> Sorry, I promised myself I wasn't going to reference that ever again, and then I did right away. Could Cody Rhodes get Wade Barrett out over the top rope in that corner? No. Good God, these two really want that little bit of momentum headed into WrestleMania. I mean, obviously, there's a lot to prove if you're Wade Barrett right now. This man is, uh, as I say, he's in by kind of a hair, so to speak. And to be at this final point in this battle royal here tonight. And of course, he won his uh, last WrestleMania match. Uh, and Wade Barrett with a big clothesline, sending Cody Rhodes over the top rope. That's a huge elimination. But let's not forget what Cody Rhodes accomplished in this battle royal. Throwing out both Justin Gabriel and Shawn Michaels. But it is Wade Barrett picking up a lot. Who's he shaking the hand with? 
What are you doing, Barrett? I think he might have got knocked on his head a little too much for Mark Henry before. Well, we'll see if Wade Barrett can pull off this victory once again this Sunday at WrestleMania when the Intercontinental Championship is hung high above the ring in a ladder match. It's going to be a great, great match. Probably one of the biggest standout matches of WrestleMania. It is a WrestleMania tradition to see a six-man ladder match. And I think the Intercontinental Championship match will be no different. It will be an amazing spectacle of a match. As we move towards our next match of the night, will AJ Lee finally get her shot at Lita? Or will Layla get an opportunity at redemption after being stood up by Lita back at uh, St. Valentine's Massacre uh, a few weeks back? We'll find that out up next. This is it. The final match to be confirmed at WrestleMania will be decided right now. AJ Lee and Layla, the two finalists in this Divas Championship tournament, will take it back to how this all started uh, back uh, two weeks after Elimination Chamber. We had our two-week hiatus. Then we came back. I'll just let Layla be introduced. Uh, it was uh, initially, I believe, a tag team matchup that took place a few weeks back. It was Layla and Tiny Shiny who defeated the Bella Twins to advance. And then, of course, uh, two weeks ago, we saw AJ Lee defeat Natalia one on one to advance. And then finally, last week, we saw Layla defeat longtime friend Tiny Shiny in a much awaited matchup between the two. And uh, now it brings us to this point here tonight, the two finalists in this mini tournament featuring all six divas <laughs> from the WWE. Is that, that's seven, isn't it? That's not six. Is it six? Two teams and two... No, it's six. Sorry, seven would include Lita. And you can feel that electricity. This Layla going in straight WWE away on the offense there. All about. I can't wait to see which one of these two faces off against Lita. The thing is, I feel like it's going to be a real slap in the face for either of these two if they come up short at WrestleMania. They've been working their butts off here on Raw every week to get to WrestleMania, whilst Lita has simply sat back at home and done nothing since Elimination Chamber when she defeated Tiny Shiny in a Divas Championship matchup. As I say, there has been so much crowd support for the idea of AJ Lee finally getting that Divas Championship opportunity. And this all stems back, for those that don't remember, this all stems back from the night in which AJ Lee won her first Divas Championship. It was a four-way elimination matchup in which AJ Lee eliminated both contestants, including the defending Divas Champion at the time, Beth Phoenix, before uh, Layla eliminated AJ Lee from the matchup right at the very end and ended up being the, the winner of that matchup simply because of that not, not did i say layla i meant Lita. if i said layla uh Lita ended up defeating aj lee to win that match wait no hang on no i think i'm mistaken sorry i believe it was uh i think i'm, yeah, I think I'm making a big mistake here i think it was actually um that Beth Phoenix had eliminated Lita, I think, maybe? I don't believe... I believe there was some kind of technicality there where, like, Lita... I can't actually remember anymore. It's been so long. <laughs> but it, it's where it all started. I believe it was the, um... Well, now I just don't know. And that series ends in deadlock. Neither one of these superstars could afford to get their opponent the upper hand. Yeah, I believe it, yeah, I believe it was the, um... AJ had defeated Lila, Lita in the past, and then AJ lost the Divas Championship back, back to Phoenix right after that. And then Phoenix defeated Lita for the Divas title. I mean, sorry, Lita defeated Phoenix for the Divas title and retired. And uh, since then, AJ Lee has been wanting a one on one match with Lita as she holds a victory over her in their most recent encounter involving a Divas Championship. And, uh, 
She just hasn't been granted it. I think I may have slipped up a little bit there. It's it's been a long time. I think that was I think that was Hell in a Cell that, that took place, which uh, in, in this universe alone was seven months no five months ago. But then on top of that, obviously we all know it was probably longer than five months ago that Hell in a Cell because I've been very very inconsistent with this season because this game has been very insufferable <laughs> to me. I'm not expecting 2K14 to just miraculously fix everything, but I do remember having fond memories of 2K14, whereas I don't really have memories of 13. Other than that, I used a lot of CAWs. That's like all I really remember about my 13 universe. Big heel kick there by AJ Lee. Is that going to be enough to defeat Lita? I mean, Layla. <laughs> Getting a little bit ahead of myself here. That gauntlet match is our main event. It is up next. The season finale main event of Raw finally coming your way. The Rock set to go one on three. But who will the three be? We don't actually know yet. And that's, that's scary to think about. We don't even know. Who the rock is up we know that uh, the big show has been mentioned as a candidate, but we do not know who the rest are. Layla asserting dominance in this matchup. She's really managed to shift momentum into her favor. AJ catches Layla with a reversal and now kick to the midsection and there's the shining wizard right off the head of Lita. This I mean Layla, this is one AJ Lee, a lot of matches cover attempt here. No. Lita Layla, you can see how you make a mistake. I'm surprised I didn't I don't think I fumbled over their names when they were actually having a match. The moment I'm talking about um a possibility between the two again. Can't seem to get my words out and Oh, I thought for a minute there this one was over. Sending Lita into the corner. A big right hand across the face, and now Layla going. What is, what is this here? Going to the top. Ooh! Well, that was flashy. Layla having a brief moment to kind of catch her breath there. And now, ooh, raking the eyes. We saw that earlier from Chris Jericho. Referee should not be allowing that as a big kick to the face with full force, mind you. Connect on AJ Lee and oh, kick out by AJ. Uh-oh, uh -oh, this could be it. The layout could connect on AJ Lee. If this connects, this one is over. Well, thankfully, Layla, Layla had second thoughts. I guess she didn't think she could get the job done off of the layout just there. As Ooh, what a drop kick by Le 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 AJ Lee. <laughs> There's so many L's. Snap my take down into this uh, submission hold. AJ Lee not going to give up. She's just not going to give up. And here we go. Layout. Layout connecting. Uh oh. Is this the beginning of the end for AJ Lee's dreams? She kicked. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy hell, what a kick out! That might be one of the most suspenseful kick outs. The referee's hand had just come down, but it was a kick out right before. Oh my god! <laughs> What are you doing, AJ? Don't do that. <laughs> Now's not the time. That has got to be one of the most suspenseful kickouts we have ever seen. Once again, that big drop kick. And AJ going up to the top. Sent on. Here comes the Divas Champion leader. Don't do this, Lita. AJ has insisted that Lita is afraid. And look at this. This kind of almost confirms it. Oh! AJ Lee striking down the Divas champion. 
And once again, AJ Lee firing on all cylinders tonight. This is intense. This Divas Championship Contenders match has really broken down, and I gotta believe, actually, I think Lita is afraid of AJ Lee now. You know, she didn't even pin her in that Royal Rumble triple threat in which she retained against AJ. I have a feeling that AJ Lee might be onto something when she says that Lita is afraid to face AJ. The Divas Champion came out to almost try and prevent AJ Lee from finally getting that opportunity that she has worked so hard for. Staring right at Alita. AJ Lee, I think, took a little too long to go for a cover there, and yeah, absolutely she did. But it might have created the opening for Layla that she needs. Rolling up uh, AJ Lee here, but the referee is still distracted, having a deal with Lita, who I believe he's just kicked from ringside. Thankfully. And AJ Lee catches Layla into a sliced bread. Cover her. Cover her now. Cover her now. Get this over with. And it will be AJ and Lita, much to Lita's dismay, evidently, for the Divas Championship at WrestleMania. This is finally going to happen. And of course, her classic best friend of all the history that they've got with each other. Of course, all those classic AJ and Natalia moments leading to a celebration here tonight as AJ Lee will finally be competing for the Divas Championship one on one in six days time. We still have our main event to come. The Rock is set to compete in a gauntlet. But who will he be against? We find that out next. Well, this is it, our season three Raw finale. Closing out with The Rock, set to compete in this gauntlet match. I cannot wait to see who JBL has got in store for him here tonight and how The Rock will try to fight to overcome such a tough challenge. The Rock has had an uphill struggle ever since Vengeance back in October when uh, JBL screwed this man out of the WWE Championship. The Rock has owned up. He has said, look, when I won the championship back at SummerSlam, I was a fraud. I was handpicked by Mr. McMahon, and I was given the championship. But I feel like I earned my right of, of my right of way as a WWE Champion. I feel like I proved to the world that I can be the greatest, the great one, the WWE Champion, The Rock. But uh, that opportunity needs to come my way once again. And as long as McMahon was in charge, it was not going to happen. We already knew that Big Show was the first opponent. The Big Show! Let me finish that off for you, since you clearly just don't want to say his name for whatever reason. The Big Show carrying himself with a very new demeanor here tonight, kind of reminiscent of the, uh, the strut of Chris Jericho, his tag team partner almost, that sour face. You know, this guy would normally be uh, really hyping up the crowd, jumping around. Just looks serious here tonight. Well, the last time these two faced off, it was a really good match last week on Raw. We're going to see it once again here tonight. I believe Justin Roberts should be dead now. <laughs> yeah, that's why he didn't want to introduce him. He knew he was getting blown up by the big show tonight. Yes, this all started back at Vengeance for The Rock. He has been believing in himself for a long time that he will get an opportunity at the WWE Championship. And it came, believe it or not, an injury sustained at the hands of Ken Shamrock to the boss, Mr. McMahon, that actually led to... Uh, McMahon being written off of the uh, general manager position as a new general manager would have to take his place. He can't operate Raw from a hospital bed. 
and his daughter Stephanie McMahon was selected and immediately she went against the grain. Stephanie saying, you know, Dad, you treated us awfully. You kept making us compete even though we didn't want to be competitors. Your son Shane needs to you. He's walked away from the WWE. He wants nothing to do with this as you continue to allow him to get into dangerous situations hurt time and time again. And uh, Stephanie McMahon not, you know, very appreciative of her situation, being given Divas Championship opportunities against her will. Obviously, she wasn't going to pass these opportunities up, but... You know, she didn't want to be a competitor. She was forced into that by her father. And uh, she wants to now try and turn things around for the WWE. She gave The Rock and John Cena two major opportunities back at St. Valentine's Massacre to get a shot at whichever world championship Cesaro did not choose for WrestleMania. Cesaro choosing to remain on SmackDown as he felt that Raw had cast him out when they gave him away to try and help rebalance the, dry, uh, the, the brands. And... Uh, because of that, Cesaro refusing to come back to Raw, which kind of meant the stars aligned for The Rock, and uh, he got that WWE Championship shot against JBL coming his way at WrestleMania. And I feel like he will do whatever it takes to get his hands on JBL, and he's finally going to do it this Sunday. We are going to see a match that we have waited for for five months. The Rock has promised he will be a genuine champion, a fighting champion, the people's champion, should he win that WWE Championship at WrestleMania. And I think we really saw signs of the fact that The Rock means what he says there. Back at, uh, you know, around Vengeance, actually, believe it or not, when he gave a WWE Championship opportunity to The Miz against McMahon's will. McMahon did not want The Miz in the WWE Championship hunt at all. But The Rock wanted to bury the hatchet. He wanted to prove to himself and to the world that he could defeat the man that taunted him over the WWE Championship during their time on SmackDown. And they did finally bury the hatchet. The Miz and The Rock finishing that match up with a handshake. You show that mutual respect from the former WWE Champion to the current WWE Champion. To all the history that they had with each other. I think The Rock, you know, he got that taste of power and he finally got it. He finally understood exactly why The Miz had become so corrupt. You know, the WWE Championship, it's its a big prize, but it's also a big responsibility. And when you're a world champion, I feel like sometimes it uh, it does something to a man. It really uh, changes a lot about them and who they are. And I think that's exactly what both The Rock and The Miz underwent during their time as a world champion. I feel like they've learned from that. And you're looking at two guys that definitely want that opportunity. Obviously, right now, The Miz is a tag team champion. He's not going on tour. But, you know, you look at The Rock, and I can understand he's now seeing the same thing happen with JBL, the man. I mean, JBL is beyond corrupt. You want to be completely honest? I don't think there's any real redemption for JBL. We talk about the story of JBL heading into WrestleMania. It all started back on ECW. He came into the business with his, with his brother, as he called him, Farouk, as part of the APA. Those two, uh, you know, they underwent a few changes, they tried to find their footing over on ECW, but in the end, JBL turning his, sorry, Bradshaw at the time, turning his back on Fully. And, uh, saying that that wasn't even the real him that you were seeing, as uh-oh, here we go, knockout punch here on The Rock. Ooh. Rock, one of very few people to have ever kicked out of that, but it looks like Big Show not even going for a cover attempt here. Uh, but yeah, it's, he sold his, his partner Farouk out. He said, uh, I'm a businessman. I'm not I'm not some kind of rough and tough whatever it is that you want to be, Farouk. I'm not a part of that, and I won't be a part of that. Completely abandoning his former tag team partner. Really changed his presentation of the man you know now. Rock now standing with the big show. And there's a big spine buster. And here we go. The most electrifying move. I don't know if this is going to be enough to keep the big show down, but The Rock. With the people's elbow. Is this going to be enough to eliminate the big show from this gauntlet match and move on to the next participant? No, not even close. You, you, then you take a look at what the what JBL did from there. He uh, he didn't once he kind of stabbed Farouk in the back. It didn't stop there. No, then he uh, then he worked his way. He weasel his way into a ECW Championship shot 
taking advantage of the rivalry between the contender Dolph Ziggler and his former partner Daniel Bryan. He, to, he you know, he knew Austin was going to come out hot and want to defend his championship. Still, Austin was very much a fighting champion, and uh, so he got these the, uh, J Big Show and Ken Shamrock, as a matter of fact, to uh, attack Austin alongside him. He had somehow managed to turn these superstars against ECW, this brand that they were all on. And clearly he had this intention of just destroying ECW from the inside. He won the championship from Austin under very shady circumstances. A lot of people don't actually recognize that as a real championship reign. It is in the history books that JBL is the final ECW champion, but it's kind of down to your own discretion whether or not you agree with that. Um, and upon, uh, upon that, he then held the championship for ransom by challenging Mick Foley to a match for his job as general manager of ECW. He, he brutalized Foley and won that match, keeping the championship and taking ownership of ECW. And upon his first night as owner, he made a deal with Mr. McMahon, another businessman like himself, that he was going to shut down ECW entirely, sell the rights back to Mr. McMahon, who had had enough of ECW, walked away from the brand that he helped bring back. on the deal that he would come over here to Raw and uh, replace McMahon's chosen champion, The Rock, and become WWE Champion. And obviously McMahon protected JBL right up until Shamrock turned against McMahon alongside Big Show. And uh, upon that injury, Stephanie taking control, Rock has, you know, he's changed a lot as a person. And I think that double cross from McMahon, that alignment with JBL really changed The Rock. It really made him see, you know, what had happened to him happening to someone else. Tried warning about, uh, warning it off to John Cena as well, who uh, was on the same road as The Rock, and in the end, the same thing happened to John Cena. I think it's really humbled Cena too, you know. I'm, I'm glad to see McMahon go on. I'm glad that the authority is no longer a thing. Right now. I, I hope that McMahon is never reinstated as a general manager. Truth be told. And The Rock, is he going to be able to force a submission out of Big Show? My god, i got to say, the way he got that sharpshooter on someone the size of Big Show be enough to make Bret Hart proud, honestly. That was very impressive. The Rock, just hooking up those giant legs of Big Show. He fights his way out of the sharpshooter. Big Show is dazed, Rock is dazed. Oh, okay, caught the Big Show into a rock bottom. Cover attempt here on the Big Show. Can he defeat him? Yes. And who's going to be... Oh, no. Mark Henry. Oh. Well, this is a, a very big deal, actually. JBL, wise to choose the world's strongest man. The Rock is not going to back down. He's going to fight through. You know, the thing is, The Rock could walk away from this gauntlet match. He could simply get himself disqualified, count it out, just take a quick and easy pinfall, get out of this as quick as possible. But it's not in his blood. It's not the kind of guy that The Rock is. And he won't do it. He won't give up. He will keep fighting. Because to him, every victory is important on the road to WrestleMania. And that includes a victory over Mark Henry and The Big Show and whoever is out there. I can't imagine JBL's got many more allies. I don't know who it's send out third. I mean, I don't even know if necessarily you could call Big Show and Mark Henry allies. And what a move by the world's strongest man who is set to face off against John Cena this Sunday. He recently asked your opinions on the uh, Twitter account at JustJitch underscore universe who you thought would uh, win a lot of the WrestleMania matches. And I believe... Uh, Mark Henry is actually creeping up on John Cena in terms of votes for uh, which one of those two you think will win. So that's, that definitely seems like a very split vote. Speaking of that vote, there's a lot of believers in The Rock at WrestleMania. Spine buster to Mark Henry. The Rock going to go for another people's elbow, maybe? He's pulling Henry away from that corner. Dead center of the ring. 
Oh, now going for his second people's elbow here tonight. My God, him without elbow pad. Elbow pads is a very strange sight. I would be amazed if that was enough to keep down the world's strongest man. Henry kicking out at two. Rock. Ooh, I love that clothesline of his. I really do. And again, the mind games are played. Rock challenging Henry to step up. This is getting intense, I tell you. I don't know that Rock can make it through this entire gauntlet match, but I'm very, very uh, much admiring his tenacity and his continuation of performing in this matchup. How can you not appreciate the devotion and the performance that we're seeing tonight? Rock once again challenging Henry, and Henry, I mean, he's happy to oblige that man up to his feet real quick. Cover attempt on Rock once again, and Rock with a kick out. This is a, a great way to bring down someone like Henry. Have them take uh, such a big plunge. That's definitely going to do us damage on Henry. Not used to coming that high off the ropes. That's thing corrected. Henry is still very much in this. And the 400 pounder gets taken off his feet. Henry rolled up here by the rock. Is he going to be able to bring Henry down with that? No. That hand had a lot of force behind it. I appreciate it for what it is, though. Rock is really giving it his all tonight. Oh, right to the gut. What an impact from the knee. Oh, rock in a bit of trouble World's here. strongest man, Mark Henry. Rolling over the rock. Down. Rock with a quick kick out, though. Do you see the speed in which The Rock is moving? It's very different to how he was early on in this match. You can really feel that uh, as time has gone on, naturally the match has really begun to take its toll on The Rock. Nice mo and drop there. Rock measuring Mark Henry. Could this be a beginning of the end moment? Henry didn't quite get up. Rock got Henry in the corner as he continues to strike away at the face of the world's strongest man. But Henry using his strength to just throw the Rock away. And the Rock knowing he's got to go for the big one. The spine buster once again on Mark Henry. Will it be enough? Not even close. Henry to his feet. Rock catches him. Rock bottom center of the ring. Can he pin Henry off of that one? And Henry's out. So who's number three going to be? Of course, no surprise there. Cheap shot on a weakened Rock. The WWE Champion wanting to humiliate The Rock ahead of WrestleMania by pinning him. Six days before they face off one-on-one. -on -one. And this is no, this is definitely not a preview of WrestleMania by any means. The Rock will not be in this condition. And let's not forget what JBL has stooped to in his time as WWE Champion, including ending the career of Booker T. I do not like... The idea of him setting foot in the ring with the WWE Champion ahead of WrestleMania, because I know JBL is willing to injure The Rock and end his career too, should he be able to. And he's trying to stand The Rock up. He's trying to hurt the WWE Champion, and it's not working. You can see, though, how much beating Big Show and Mark Henry has taken out of the number one contender of the WWE Championship. You can see the damage on his face. attempt here by JBL and Rock just about kicks out he's just throwing those sluggish strike uh oh JBL with that vicious power bomb and a cover on top Rock's down and JBL pins the number one contender this is not in my opinion any kind of a preview of Wrestlemania I know exactly what he was playing at but I don't agree and JBL celebrating, of course, not going to hesitate to try and hurt him even more 
on the road to WrestleMania. Enough is enough, JBL. Come on. Well, JBL stands tall over the rock six days ahead of WrestleMania, but the question is, will this be the site that we see at WrestleMania? We will see these two finally face off one-on-one -on -one in six days' time. But for now, I thank you all for watching, and I will see you this Friday night on the season finale edition of Friday Night Smackdown.